Well, hello everyone and welcome again to my shop. As you can see, I've got one of those X-Carve things. So here's my executive summary review. It works. It does everything it's supposed to do. Yes, the build can be a bit of a challenge, but the instructions from Inventables are really pretty well done. So if you want, you could bail on the rest of the video right about now. Now, I think the last thing that YouTube needs is yet another detailed build video. There are plenty of those floating around, so I'm going to take kind of a big picture approach to the whole issue. The first and most important thing that you need to keep in mind is that this is a kit. It is not a completed tool. As a woodworker, you know, we're used to buying tools that are more or less complete. Sure, you may need to tweak some settings, you need to make some adjustments, or even build jigs so that you can use the tool the way you want to use it, but the tool itself is more or less complete. Like, you don't buy a drill and get a motor and some gears and some wires and then you have to cut the wires and solder it together and you need to fit the motor to the gear and then you need to pack it into the container and screw it together and then hopefully it works. And yet that's more or less what you're doing here with an X-Carve. I repeat, it's a kit. And if you hate that sort of thing, you're not going to have a good time with this. So there are a lot of parts. There's a lot of steps. But just take your time, and follow all the instructions, and you should be fine. On the X-Carve website, they've got detailed illustrated instructions. They've got videos that you can follow that show you the whole steps. You work your way through that, and you should have a functioning machine at the end. And I guarantee that the first time you turn it on, <laughs> you're going to be pretty excited. So now here are some areas where I think there could be some improvement. So let me bring the camera in close and we'll get some detailed shots about what I'm talking about. There are 16 self-tapping screws like this that need to be installed. Sixteen. Seriously, I had blisters on my hand from the screwdriver when I was finished installing them. Ow. This is the power supply and the Arduino and the G-Shield which control the X-Carve. Now, I was careful to follow the instructions, and yet this is all I've got for slack wire here at the end. You know, it's like not even six inches. This, this really does not give me a whole lot of freedom and of movement of where, where I can put this thing. Now, given that I built it, I know I can probably just get some more wire and I can redo it. I mean, yes, it's a kit, but really another, another 12 inches here just would, would have been really nice. While we're looking at this thing, let's talk about the shape. Other people have about commented about that online. You know, it's this weird, awkward L shape. It, it's really like, how do you build that into a cabinet? Um, it, you know, something more rectangular, if it could be designed that way, I, I think that would just be a little bit easier to work with. This is one of the belts that the carriage slides along. Now, from instructions I read online, I put zip ties on all of the belts that I put on the unit. I just, I just did that ahead of time without even waiting to see if it was necessary. Um, as I was working with it, there was, there was a little bit of slippage as I was getting it set up and I just thought that was just, just, a simple, just a simple little thing to do that would just avoid any future problems. Here's the z-axis. I had a little trouble when I first set it up. It would go down fine, but coming up it would just sort of jerk and hesitate a bit and I had just a little bit of 3-in-1 oil here on the threads. And I also increased the voltage, uh, which you can do on the G-Shield. Both of those I read on the In Inventables website uh, forum for some other people have done that and that helped and now it just goes up and down smooth. Soldering, let's face it, it's intimidating. I've done soldering before and I didn't think it was really going to be an issue with me when I built this thing but when it came to soldering these tiny little pins here onto the edge of the G-Shield I was intimidated. Um, it's really tiny and you really don't want to mess it up and ruin your board. Um, you know if, if Inventables, if you could remove the need for soldering, I, I, th I think it would uh, just make the kit that much more accessible to people. Now the fan is not really labeled for air direction and the instructions don't really talk about which way you should face it, they just tell you to mount the fan. Um, I read some advice online that said you should really want the airflow blowing down, so onto the chips that are on the G-Shield, and uh, so that's something you might want to keep in mind. Make sure you buy extra bits right away. I broke two of them on my first test cuts. I expect that both of us are going to make mistakes as we're learning to use this thing. Buy extra bits. None of those are big deals. It's really a well-designed kit. It's a neat tool when it goes together. So let me show you the first little project I tried out with it. 
My wife came up with a nice simple project for the X-Carve. She wanted a photo frame for a picture of our cat, but in the shape of a paw. So I found some clip art online and imported that into easel, which is very easy to do. Then I set the depth of the large pad section to be about an eighth of an inch to hold the photo. The other parts I set to a much shallower depth of cut, just for speed and simplicity. And then I surrounded the whole thing with a shallow circle, which would guide me in cutting it out later. Oh, and just an FYI, this simple little project took about 16 minutes to carve. I'm using a 1 8 inch solid carbide, two flute straight bit, and the material is ash hardwood. The design is only a bit under 4 inches in diameter, so in future I am definitely going to need to rig up some sort of a holder for the shop vac hose so that I'm not just standing there. Gives a pretty nice clean cut, just need a little bit of touch up around the edges. A little bit of plywood cut really nicely and that fits right there by having it cut around the shape instead of inside the shape and now I can use this as a pattern for cutting out the picture that I want to put in there. Cool. Fits like that. Craft, you get this at a craft store, you get some Mod Podge, and that is a water based sealer, glue, and finish, and you can use that to seal in the picture. It goes on white, but it will dry clear. I'm just going to coat the whole face of it so it's got the seam sheen over the whole picture. So that's it. That's my build. Those are my first impressions. As you can see, one of the first things I did is build a little platform where I can store some stuff to work with it. Now i got to figure out where to put it in the shop. Come back in about six months and I should put together another little review where I'll have tried this out for much longer because right now it's still early days. So thanks for coming by and we'll see you next time. If you're a Canadian ordering one of these X-Carve units, the good news is there's no duty. However, you are liable for the sales tax. Here in Ontario, I was assessed 13% GST, HST on the purchase price of this unit by the lovely people from Canada Customs.